Hi, Tim here with SI. In this video, we're going to be talking about integrating Control 4 with the Screen Innovations Troy. The Troy can be used with or without the Tahoma and or Link Pro Z if you wanted to integrate the RS45 shades with the Zigbee and RTS shades. So now, before we get started, a couple of things we need to remember. First of all, uh, we need to make sure that we're in a minimum of Composer Pro 3.2. The basic configuration for Control 4 needs to be completed, as well as the Troy and or Tahoma and Link Pro Z setups are completed as well. This means that your devices should be added, accessories should be added, and you should have any needed limits and or groups configured before we start this programming. We also need to make sure that we have the Troy drivers downloaded. These can be downloaded from the support section of the Screen Innovations website. Uh, after downloading, let's get them into the correct Control 4 folders so that we can properly search and view them uh, in the items library. Let's go ahead and move forward with the integration. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to make sure that we can find the devices that we've added. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, in the search section, we're going to put in there Screen Innovations. And you can see there are three drivers here. So the first one that we're going to use is the Screen Innovations Troy Gateway. So let's go ahead and add that. This is the interface specifically for the Troy itself. Now, once we get this installed, we can go over into here and let's do the basic config that's needed. So the gateway username and password, this is the Telnet username and password that you will configure in the Troy itself. So in this case, I used Telnet1. We'll set that and password one and we'll set that. Uh, now let's also, before we move forward, let's go to the connection section and let's add an IP address for this device. So you can see over here in the SDDP that my Troy has already been found. So if I mouse over it, I can see that that IP address is right there, 192.168.86.23. Let's open that up. And that is 192.168.86.23. All right. So now let's go back to our system design section. And we should see up here at the top, operational mode is OK. That's all that's required for setting up the Troy Gateway driver. Now, you'll see there are two other drivers over here. There's the blind driver and the blind group driver. Now, there are two different drivers, and they are used just in that manner. So the blinds driver is specifically for adding shades or screen. So I'm going to add two in this case. All right, and then now from here we have the blinds group driver. So let's go ahead and add one of those for this instance. All right, so I have three drivers here added. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is back on the screen innovations, the Troy Gateway driver. Let's go in here and click on the Discover Devices. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell the Control 4 and the driver to go out and look over the Troy to see what devices are actually connected. And again, if you have a Tahoma or Link Pro Z connected, those devices will show up in this device list as well. All right, so let's go to our first blinds driver. Now in here, uh, we have a drop down under configuration for blinds name. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull this and see any devices. Look at that. So we already have all of our devices connected. And if you can see here, the first two, these are RS45 shades that are actually configured on the Troy unit. The next couple, these are RTS devices. These are on my Link Pro Z. And I also have my Zigbee shades and Zigbee accessories that I can use. So let's go ahead and let's pull one RS45 shade. We can set that. That is all that's required for connecting a single shade through the Troy driver for Control 4. So let's go ahead to Blinds 2. And on this one here, we're going to select one of these Zigbee shades. And we'll set that. Now, Blinds 3, this was one of our groups driver. So now there's a couple of different options in here once you make your choices. So these are my available groups that I have available on my Troy and on my Tahoma and or Link Pro Z. So in this case, let's choose the Zigbee group and we'll set it. That's it. That's all that I have to do to get control of that group from Control 4. But notice this group master blind. So this is an interesting one. Let's say that your group contained three shades. Shade number one was, you know, maybe three feet tall. Uh, shade number two and three were eight feet tall. So in this case, this is important for which device is going to report feedback. Of the three devices in this group, let's just say that uh, Zigbee 1 
is shorter than Zigbee 2. So I'm going to select Zigbee 1. Now, when I do this, the second that Zigbee shade number 1 stops moving, it's going to report that status back to the driver and then also on to the Control 4 interface. Now, there is one problem that works there, though. If the first device that stops reports, then you may not know the, when the other one stops. That could be an issue using things like Toggle, uh, as well as just your basic UI interface. It may show that the, that the devices have stopped, but one of them may still be moving. So the other option would be, say, Shade 2, which is the longer shade. So as Zigbee Shade 1 stops, it does not report until Zigbee Shade number 2 goes all the way down to its limit and stops. Then it reports that the group has stopped moving. I believe that that's a better choice, so I'm going to go ahead and select Set for that. Now you can tell it uh, in here the travel time. This is actually something that will figure itself out because what it does is as you run that shade from full limit to full limit, so like say upper limit to lower limit, as that moves up and down, it records the time it takes for that shade to move from top to bottom and bottom to top and then it will generate a travel time that's just so that the driver knows how long it takes for that shade to move when it's triggered and that's what that function is used for outside of that we can simply double click on our blinds drivers and we can test the interface here just to make sure that the integration and the control portion is working and this is all that it takes to integrate uh, control 4 with the screen innovations troy so thank you for watching check out some of our other videos